Well, what's up ladies and gentlemen? So today, it's my very first lesson on Jaimini astrology. And I'm not gonna go too much into detail about the history of Jaimini and how it was written by uh, Parash, not Parashra, Rishi, Jaimini, uh, because I'm not too good about these historic things. I'd like to go straight into the practical things of, practical of things. So, I have been, you know, reading, learning uh, Gemini astrology. Uh, Ernest Wilhelm was very generous enough to send me his lessons, his audio lessons on Gemini. So I have been listening that repeatedly. There's like, literally, it's just like Parashara astrology. There's like little mountain on top and then there's a huge iceberg at the bottom. And I am still on the mountain top. So what I will share with you today in part one and part two, which will also be uploaded today, is just the basics that I've learned. It's just the mountain top. So don't, what, what I teach you, just stick to what I teach you for now and don't try to go any further than that unless you get an advice from any expert Germany astrologer, you know? And as I said, K.N. Rao, Juan Paul Manley, you know, uh, Mark Boney, all these guys, including Deepak Basaria, are huge, huge followers of Germany, and they're the experts of Germany astrology. So, you know, going directly to them will be even more, uh, you know, knowledgeable than what you might even learn here. But the reason why I'm making this video today is because once I started looking at just the basic chart with this basic aspects of Germany, it completely changed my perspective about prediction. Like the predictions that I missed previously, or when I said, you know, no, you're not going to have a foreign spouse. And then they said, oh, no, I do have a foreign spouse. And I'm like, how did that happen? Well, those little things that I missed suddenly came to life with Germany astrology and Germany aspects. So in part one, I'm going to discuss how to read a basic Germany chart. And then part two, I'm going to show you the seven karakas of Germany. Not eight, only seven karakas. Because once you add Rahu or Ketu as the karakas, you're going to completely destroy your Gemini. So we're going to stick to that in this part two. But so part one, I'm going to tell you how Gemini chart is read. Okay. Like in Vedic astrology that I've taught you, how Saturn can aspect third, seventh, and tenth place from itself. How Jupiter can act aspect fifth, seventh, and ninth place from itself. How Mars can aspect fourth, uh, seventh and eighth place from itself. Well, all of these aspects become useless in Germany. You do not use basic astrological aspects at all when you're reading it through the eye of a uh, of a Germany astrologer. Okay, but what you can do is you can apply all, both aspects in the same chart, and that's when you'll start getting a beautiful result. Okay, so that's what I'm going to teach you today. So here's a basic idea that you need to know with uh, Germany astrology is the difference between cardinal, fixed, and mutable signs. What are these signs and what do they do? You know, like their elements like fire, water, earth, air. It's same thing. You know, there are three groups. Cardinal, fixed, and mutable. You can go either way. Okay, so the very first thing you need to know is the cardinal signs. What are the cardinal signs? Cardinal signs are the pillar. They are the goal-oriented signs. They are the signs that provide stability in your chart, that provide grounding in your chart. And these are the original Kendra signs, okay? So, the cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Capricorn, and Libra. I should go Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Ca uh, Capricorn, okay? These four signs are cardinal signs, so never forget that. Then remember the fixed signs. Fixed signs are Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Taurus. These are the fixed signs. Again, let me go by the chronological order. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, these four are the fixed signs. Now, what are the mutable signs? And fixed signs simply uh, show stability, simply shows fixation on certain things show stability on fixation like th these are the people who do not really like the change too much okay then we are going to look at mutable signs which is gemini not gemini astrology just sign of gemini virgo 
um, Sagittarius and Pisces. So Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces are known as mutable signs. So now ne never forget these three categories when you want to look at Gemini astrology. Okay, because in Gemini astrology, planets do not have aspects. It is the signs that have aspects. This is why it's so important to understand. To uh, and it's going to make sense later on that uh, you know why certain signs only aspect certain signs. So when you look at the eye of a Gemini, Saturn will not have his three, seven, and ten aspect. Saturn will only aspect whatever the sign that it's placed in is allowing him to aspect. Okay, but it's just only through the lens of Gemini. In regular Parashra, Saturn has its 3, 7, and 10 aspects. And you can mix them together. And that's where you will know why Saturn doesn't just bring 3 situations in your life, but actually brings 10 different situations in your life. You know, even though we go through one Mahadasha, a lot of things happen in that Mahadasha, not only because of the fact we go through Antra Dasha and Pariyantra Dasha, but also because planet aspects more than just what their uh, given aspects are in uh, astrology. So... How do these aspects work in Gemini? Well, you got to understand this. All the cardinal signs will aspect the fixed signs, except the one next to them, which I will show you what, why, what I mean by that. Then all the fixed signs only aspects the cardinal signs, okay, except for the one next to them. And then the third is all the mutable signs only aspect each other and nothing else. So very important to remember. Cardinal signs aspect the fixed signs except the one next to, next to them. And all the fixed signs aspect the cardinal sign except the one sign sitting next to them. And mutable signs always aspect each other. So... What do I mean when I say that a planet uh, will only um, aspect all the other signs except the one next to it? Well, as I told you that the cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Okay? So let's say if you have Rahu sitting in the fourth house, or I forget even Rahu, let's say Saturn. Saturn sitting in the fourth house in Cancer. Looking at through the lens of Gemini, Saturn will aspect the, uh, the sign, all the, see Saturn is in the cardinal uh, sign. It will aspect all the fixed signs except the one next to it. And the one next to Saturn is the sign of Leo. So Saturn will not aspect that. But Saturn will aspect is Scorpio, Aquarius, and Taurus. And not, it's not really Saturn aspecting it. Because Saturn is sitting in the sign of Cancer, it's the sign of Cancer that is aspecting all these different houses. And this is just the Gemini eye of the Saturn. In regular astrology, in the fourth house of Cancer, Saturn is then aspecting the sixth house, seventh house, and the uh, sixth house, tenth house, and the ascendant. So you see, when you combine Gemini and you combine Parashra, Look how many aspects Saturn is having just in his time period or when it's awake in its time period. I'll give you another, another example, okay? How would you look at if Saturn was sitting in the 10th house in the sign of Capricorn in your horoscope, how will you look at this through the eye of Gemini? Again, Saturn is still in a cardinal sign. It is in a Capricorn sign, which is cardinal sign. So again, like I told you, cardinal signs will always aspect the fixed signs except the one next to them. So what uh, uh, signs or what houses do you think Saturn is aspecting? You can even comment below right now, pause the video just to test yourself, okay? Saturn is going to aspect all the fixed signs except the one next to it. And the one next to Saturn is the sign Aquarius. So Saturn will not aspect that, but Saturn will aspect Taurus, Leo and Scorpio from the 10th house and that's just through the lens of Gemini and if you are also looking at the same time with the Parashra lens Saturn is aspecting the 12th house the 4th house and the 7th house okay so this is how you can judge any planet let's say you take um, let's say we take Taurus ascendant okay in Taurus ascendant 
which is a fixed sign, let's put Jupiter there. So in Taurus Ascendant, Jupiter in a regular Parashara astrology will aspect the 5th, 7th and ninth house. Okay, But when you look at the eyes of Gemini, fixed signs will aspect the cardinal signs except the one next to them. So Jupiter, okay, Jupiter is going to aspect the third house, which is Cancer, because it's a cardinal sign. It is going to aspect the sixth house, which is again a cardinal sign, Libra. And it's going to aspect the uh, ninth house again, because it also has a cardinal sign there, uh, Capricorn. But it's not going to aspect Aries, which is a cardinal sign. But the reason why it's not going to aspect is because of the fact it's right next to it. So simple rule. Cardinal and fixed signs aspect each other except the one next to it. Okay. And this is where you can even take Rahu and Ketu. If Rahu and Ketu sitting in Gemini. Okay. They're sitting in the ascendant and the first and seventh axis. Okay. And what did I tell you about the mute, uh, 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 mutable signs? Mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo. Sagittarius and Pisces. These signs will always aspect each other. So since Rahu and Ketu are both sitting on the axis of Gemini and Sagittarius, their aspect, they're not only aspecting the fifth and ninth aspect, which I follow, but all they also aspect the fourth house, seventh house, and tenth house. And they, it, both of them look at each, each other's houses. So if you have this alignment, your Rahu is also looking at your fourth house and influencing it, looking at the seventh house influencing it, and looking at the tenth house and influencing because these are all the mutable signs. You can even take Saturn. You, you can put Saturn for in Gemini Ascendant, let's put Saturn in the fourth house. Saturn will aspect the Ascendant, seventh house, and tenth house this time because of the Gemini lens. If you put a Parashara lens, then Saturn only aspects the 6th house, 10th house, and the Ascendant, not 7th house. So this is why once you start looking at a chart through this lens of Gemini, you will start knowing why certain things happen. Why did I marry a spouse from foreign lands? Okay, so let's give you an example of uh, why someone can marry a spouse from foreign lands. Let's uh, look at... Um, Let's do Aries Ascendant, okay? Let's do Aries Ascendant and let's put Venus in the seventh house. And that means if for Aries Ascendant, the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth house are all are containing cardinal signs. And let's put, uh, I would say, let's put uh, Rahu in the second house, okay? Or let's let, forget even that. Let's put Rahu in the fifth house. Make it even more uh, easy. Rahu is sitting in the fifth house of Leo. Okay. Now, for a regular person, when they're looking at through the eyes of Parashara, they see that Rahu is only looking at the uh, fifth and ninth place from itself. That means it's looking at the ninth house and it's looking at the ascendant. Okay, and Rahu is what? Rahu is foreign things. Rahu is things that are unorthodox. Rahu is things that are out of the norm, out of the boundaries of society. And then you realize that why is it that this client marries somebody, you know, completely opposite their religion. They fell in love, had a great romance, yet people are opposed to it. And yet there's no other aspect on Venus in this chart. You know, but why did this person ended up marrying somebody from foreign lands? Well, that's because through the lens of Gemini, Rahu is at, being in a fixed sign is going to aspect all the cardinal signs except the one next to it. So Rahu is going to look at the seventh house, tenth house, and the first house, except the fourth house because the sign of Cancer is right next to the fixed sign of Leo, and he's not going to look at that. So once you start looking at charts with this lens, you will, first of all, your aspects will increase, okay, most of the time. And this way you can see, because now Rahu is in aspect to Venus. Rahu is looking at Venus because the sign of Leo is looking at the sign of Libra. And since Rahu is sitting there, 
he's now looking at the seventh house. And so this can also show that somebody, if you're running through Rahu Madhasha in your 20s, in Rahu Venus period, you can get suddenly married with, with a foreign spouse. Okay. And it can also show, because Rahu is also looking at your 10th house. So it shows that your 10th house is being influenced by Rahu as well, including the ascendant. And so whatever Rahu is representing in your chart with all the aspects and conjunctions, it can show not only a out of the box marriage, but an unusual out of the box career, an unusual out of the box personality. Okay. So this is how you will, st you should start looking at charts. And I know at the very first time, this didn't make sense. I'm like cardinal, mutable, fixed, you know, even though I knew of this, what these meant, but it's just that looking at the aspect took me some time, literally took me like half an hour of looking because my eyes weren't used to this. Every time I looked at Saturn in the fourth house, I saw the sixth house aspect, but only after like um, half an hour of just looking, looking now, when I look at a chart, my eyes do not imagine just the light of Saturn's aspect on the normal houses. But I also look at Saturn aspect through Gemini lens and Gemini aspects. And that's when I see, oh, this must have happened in Saturn, Antradasha and this Mahadasha. Because now I know where else is Saturn looking and he's going to put his discipline, uh, organization skills and frustration over that house as well. So this is my very first lesson of and the most basic lessons of aspects in Gemini and how planets don't aspect. It is the sign that aspect. Okay, and in the next uh, lessons of Gemini on the part two that I will upload right after this, I'm going to show you the Karakas of Gemini and how you actually see certain situations in your um, uh, life according to the Karakas of Gemini. Like Atma Karaka will show personality and Dhara Karaka will show the spouse. All of these things are very good, very accurate. And if you watch that uh, When Will I Get Married uh, video interview with Juan Paul Manley, you'll start to see what he's talking about now. Start looking at your chart this way. And obviously I'm still learning. So I'm not going to go into the Chara Dasha and Yogini Dasha because I still need to learn that. I still need to look at people's chart and I still need to be able to predict accurately that what situations they went through in their Yogini and Chara Dasha. Only then I'll make the third part, which could be a month from now, six months from now. But just this part, these two parts really took me like, two, three months of studying and looking at previous charts and seeing, wow, it just doesn't fail. Okay. So guys, this was my little lesson on Germany astrology part one of aspects. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below because I'll be uploading more videos regarding Germany and obviously all the regular series of Vedic astrology that I'm doing. And if you want to know things about basic on uh, Vedic astrology and as conjunctions and all the ins and outs of it. Check out the links below. Check out my book, Sir, Astrology at the Speed of Light and Conjunctions at the Speed of Light. And remember, my book, Aspects at the Speed of Light, comes out on August 27th. And when you get these books at the link below, I will send you the link to look at your own chart. Just make sure you follow the directions below. And yes, I will finally have Mr. K and Rao coming on my channel next week. So I will announce that this Sunday as well as uh, Shri Deepak Basaria will let me know exactly when Mr. and Shri K and Rao will be coming on my channel and illuminating it with his presence. All right, see ya.